welcome Design Chief Bill Mitchell. And Bill, from what we uh, can see, picked up exactly where Harley Earl left off uh, as the uh, Chief Design Designer. Uh, the Corvette became his baby, and the uh, and the flare continued. Also, uh, somebody very interested in uh, preserving the mark and seeing to it that it was successful on the racetrack. And um, and uh, we all know the stories about uh, Bill Mitchell and his skunk works uh, picking up the race cars that uh, General Motors uh, didn't see fit to uh, to uh, race. Uh, he also uh, was passionate about motorcycles and and uh, the contrast and, and uh, synergy there, of course, is uh, is one that uh, we're all used to seeing, uh, namely the uh, you, you know the design, the flowing designs, and uh, seeing Bill in uh, in matching leathers and helmet uh, to his motorcycle is, uh, is an image that uh, I always remember. You know, in the design business, you've got to be the style leader. And to be the style leader, you have to be on course with the style of the day. Bill Mitchell was born in 1912, the son of a Buick dealer in Greenville, Pennsylvania. His father would bring home stunts and Mercer sports cars, quickly immersing Bill in the excitement of driving. As an office boy, working at an ad agency in New York City, he would draw the road races held at nearby Terrytown. These illustrations came to the attention of Walter Carey, who suggested that Bill contact Harley Earl over at General Motors. Earl hired him in 1935, and within a year, Bill was head of the Cadillac studio. During the next 20 years, Earl and Mitchell, alike in many ways, worked together to maintain style dominance. In 1959, Mitchell succeeded Earl as Vice President of Styling at GM. In design, there's a word we call vogue, and vogue means the acceptance of modern-day styling. In all design today, there's a new sheer look, whether it's in architecture, furniture, or clothing. Bill was the man. You know, Harley Earl was the giant that really started it all. But I have to say, I think Bill Mitchell was the man. Not only for design, but, but for Corvette. I don't think there is any one person that did more for the Corvette. But Bill Mitchell was a feisty, fiery guy. And he was one of those guys that you just, you couldn't do enough for him. And he was funny, he was stern, he was flamboyant, but boy, could he lead. He was a, a fantastic design leader. We didn't make five or six models and go through a process of elimination. We strayed right on course because we knew the automotive industry needed a new look, a sheer look, and we wanted to give Chevrolet the new modern look of today. Harley Earl was the creator of the Corvette, but it was Bill Mitchell who took the Corvette design and really put the excitement in it. I became Mitchell's assistant. So I was there when the 63 Stingray was born. And it's very clear to me, Mitchell was a designer of that car. He described that car. He described that car, you know, a wing body shape with four fender bumps over the wheels. That's it. You know, and his signature was that upper structure that tapered back to a point. That was what he loved. The 63 vet had two strong identifiable influences. One was the track. When Chevrolet gave up racing in 1957, in deference to the National Safety Council, the SR2 competition chassis was headed for storage when Bill Mitchell bought it. He and Larry Shinoda designed a fiberglass shell for the car, dubbed it Stingray, and with Dick Thompson as driver, campaigned it successfully in 1959-1960. A show car inspired by a trip was the second influence of the 63. The Mako Shark had all the drama of its namesake. It is said to have been Bill Mitchell's favorite design of all time with the resultant Stingray being his favorite production car. I remember the 63 split window coupe. When 
that was the design. As as a designer, we wanted that little one strip that went on the roof to go all the way down to the tail, unbroken, smooth. I was so enthralled with that That meant you had to put an island in the center of the background. Ah! Sorrow was so mad, but Mitchell was tough. And uh, Mitchell won. It was a one day in I remember the 63 Corvette. I bought one after the first thing they could. It was an exciting day of my life. And I would drive it. And sure enough, in the rear view mirror, all you could see was this thing. And I'd, I'd chuckle to myself, but I wouldn't say anything. I put up with that because I knew, man, I was looking good. In 1965, Mitchell unveiled a stunning new Corvette show car called Manta Ray, which was a preview of the 68 production model. But he was great because if you did a good job, he always let you drive the cars. And there's nothing more exciting than to take one of Mr. Mitchell's cars home uh, for the weekend. And a lot of the Corvettes that came out under Bill, a lot of people share the, the spotlight, but don't kid yourself, Bill Mitchell was the driving force. You can't forget Bill Mitchell because he was the one that really put the spunk and the flair and the life into the Corvette image. 